Hello there, and welcome back to episode 27 of my tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. And today we're going to set up a magma workshop. And I got a few words in, well, in conclusion of the last episode. And after we're done with setting up the magma workshop, my plan is to go back to the depths because we got plenty of green glass blocks to work with and there's a lot of uh, adventures that we can have down here. So we're going to go and continue first with the magma workshop. So the first thing that I want to talk about is in the aftermath of the last episode, I was uh, thinking that I hadn't linked my bridges, but I did. What has happened is the magma has burned the mechanisms. So I had to rewind all this and build this again with magma safe mechanisms. You can find out which stones are magma safe here in labor, stone use, and this screen here will show you what's magma safe and whatnot. But the problem, the real problem is that you cannot designate what mechanism should be used. So my clunky yet useful workaround looks like this. So I went to my workshop and I, uh, I did forbid all the non-magma safe uh, thingies and then I added a little bit of a, a work order here where I ordered them to make just uh, 10 more bauxite mechanisms. I would suggest you to consider when you're starting out a new fortress that when you're putting up your first mechanism work orders you could also do yourself a favor and designate one magma safe stone from the get-go and you would save yourself from that mess. But if that ever happens to you, you need to forbid all the mechanisms that you have in store. A designated stockpile for that works. They are considered furniture in case you are wondering. And yeah, then and only then your dudes will use that stuff to link it properly. So speaking about linking it properly, we can now shut down this connection and now I uh, I will I will drain that out and we will begin working up here. So this is the new uh, the new area there. So we're going to make this the sand stockpile zone because you know now we have to get our or stuff down here. You know that's just what we're uh, what we are ought to do. The cool thing about that is that we now can smelt a stuff directly without any uh, without any problems in between so this one will be a stockpile zone for all the metal ores and let's uh, well we don't have stone uh, we don't have steel uh, stuff here so we're going to relay that here and last but not least this will be for all the metal bars so quick setup nothing special we're now going to have the pleasure of deleting these uh, stockpiles here because we don't need them anymore. They are not needed anymore. And I, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do this. If you want to relay your entire workshop like that or not, I leave that up to you. I personally find it very um, comfortable to have this uh, to have this going like this because now we can do all the jobs that we did before without fuel and that's that's pretty amazing i love this so for that regard we're now going to dismantle all the stuff up here and of course this does mean we need to reorganize our logistics and all but uh well it is it is worth the pain believe me all right so let's see this is the lever we want to pull because I want to uh, shut off this connection now. Enjoy the occasional elk bird. Really need to do something about that place here. I need a door here. Walls. This should not happen. So, yeah. This will no, not happen anymore once these walls are built and the door and all is in place. Right. I mean, this staircase is only the staircase for that. Okay. 
So let's assign somebody to pull that lever. If a lever isn't getting pulled fast enough for your taste, make it the most important task in the fortress. And a deadly dust monster has arrived. Oh, luckily not at our depth. Oh man, I'm so relieved. So, uh, that's just um, at Cavern Lair 3. And we have no direct connection to Cavern Lair 3. At least I hope so. Our new, our newest uh, thingy here went straight ahead, away from that. It, it really pays off to check these things out from time to time, you know? Just uh, to save you from that whoopsie when you thought you were safe. Oh, whoopsie, there's a beast of made of deadly, and, um, spitting deadly dust into your uh, base. Okay, so now we pull that lever, which is linked to that bridge. And now that chamber here is, uh, well, contained. We're now going to let off the excess magma, and uh, that's that, you know. My hunters keep killing elk birds. I love doing this. I just love doing this. All right, so to watch it. So now that bridge cranks down and the remaining magma plummets back into the pond here. Oh, there we go. That's a pretty uh, nice system to get the to get the uh, whole to reset the whole um, uh, pump stack. All right, so let's get on over here and uh, you know there's this. Okay, this thing needs to go. The elk bird is uh, still here. Okay, so to set up these workshops, we're going to need to make a channel. So let's do this like that. There's a means to my method. I'm going to explain in a second. So here we go. Unlock that. And just like that. All right, that should do the trick. And probably a few more, but we're going to make this like that. All right. So these holes are 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 necessary to connect the the forge or whatever you want to build to the rest of the um, place there. Ah, uh, yeah. They're storing them stuff, uh, that stuff there. Oh yeah. Also, um, we need to limit those. So the moment you assign wheelbarrows to a uh, to a stockpile, you also limit the amount of people that can work at that workplace. It's a really, really nifty trick. This way you'll have a lot less workers wheezing around and you still get the job done eventually. Okay, so, oh damn, I I put these on low priority, didn't I? All right, that's why nothing gets done. Righty right, so here's the deal. Every workshop that is a magma workshop needs a direct connection to a magma tile below. So that's what we created here. The benefit of how we did this is quite clear. Wait a second, cave blobs? All right, that's not my problem. Um, so this chamber here is fully contained. It's locked off. There is no connection to nothing except for this chamber. So there can be no magma denizens uh, spitting into our soup that will swim into our workshops. Can all happen, can all happen. And uh, this way, I personally prefer always a hermetically sealed magma chamber, just like that. If we'd, for example, just uh, built a floor up above that uh, thingy here and build a house over this thing, it would be perfectly possible. I mean, look at this thing. You could just floor the entire place and then, uh, and then do the same thing like I did here. But that would have a direct connection to the magma seas down here below. And, you know, stuff can swim up to you. And you don't want to have a, ma a, a fire snake swimming in your workshop. You just don't want to. So, this being said, safety has been ensured. And the other thing is the, the holes are, are going into the corner. That's, if you would put it into middle, you would be able to build the workshop. But the workshop wouldn't be able to be used. Ooh, ghost baby. 
So, Mestos. All right. So we need to do that real quick. Really, really important job, as always. As soon as a ghost pops up, I strongly implore you to, to get that fixed, because ghosts can really, really be nasty in, in so many regards. Okay, so that's been all set up. Are the levers all... Um, where the heck are you there? So, he wasn't able to leave the pump stack, I just realized. Did I lock up anybody else? <laughs> Alright, I didn't. So, that's good. So let's lock up this, uh, this door here. It's just make sure that no beasties can just freely roam into the fortress. Alright, so the holes have been drilled, and now we're just going to set up the whole business down here yet again. So, we just need magma smelters now. I want to choose from items, yes, thanks. And um, ideally, you use exactly here. You need to use magma safe materials to build these workshops, just like uh, with all the magma business. But uh, since we have excessive uh, amounts of gabbro available, this uh, gabbro and uh, bauxite is ain't much of a big deal. So uh, let's set up the magma glass furnaces as well. I want to select the blocks. And soon we will be needing no more fuel whatsoever for our, for our endeavors. This is a real big step forward, you know. I could be also using dirt, I guess, but... Uh, now I have felt the decision, now I want to make it look more uniformly, it's just me. So, and last but not least, the Magma Forge found here. So... I don't, I don't like that the standard setting is uh, not the one that I prefer. <laughs> so, here we go. Here. I don't want them to uh, use green glass blocks for these workshops, you know? Okay, so we got a couple of these uh, thingies extra. You can now, well, I'm going to seal them off now with floor blocks because I don't want any dwarf to fall into them, but uh, you can select that for yourself if you want that. This row is uh, free. You can then dismantle these blocks, but or for the sake of demonstration. So this is pretty much all that we need to do there. Ooh, goblin thief and... That's an interesting menu. How did the Goblin Thieves make it so deep into the fortress? Alright. The Goblin Thief didn't make it against the joint forces of our... Uh... Ah, they're Snatchers. Now I see what's going on there. So, did I forget another one? No. Okay. So... Looks like we had an access to that uh, to that um, cavern layer. Now we're uh, really, really in trouble. Let's see if our military can take care of that or not, or if everybody will now die a horrible death. So that's really bad news. That's as bad news as it can get. I don't quite understand how that thing. Uh, made it that far, but I assume it can fly or something like that. So... Er, it's gone all of a sudden? I have a hard time believing that, so let's see how that uh, goes on. So, well, that thing was 115 levels below, so we need to find out where the security breach has happened. So, let's be careful about that. That 
it's a tad bit odd. I mean, this thing should actually wreak havoc upon my base, but uh, where the hell did he get into get into my base? That's always one of the big issues in the later stages of the game. When your fortress gets larger and larger, it is harder and harder to oversee these things, you know? And the game is meant to uh, to be like that to you. Let's put it down like that. So, um, yeah, well, the only assumption that I have is that this thing was a fly-in monster. And uh, it had some opportunity to just fly between the layers that I haven't seen yet, but, well... The most curious thing is that this thing is not uh, rampaging through my fortress in any way, you know? That's what's really um, wond wondering me. Ah oh, well. Looks like I, I went away lucky. I don't know. But, uh, you know... Oh yeah, more cavern dwellers. That's at least something I know to deal with. Somehow this fortress is built in a uh, in the vicinity of bajillions of these. But uh, yeah, well, whatever. So there, you know, I don't want people here. So the good news is that uh, stationing the military in their vicinity is usually ta uh, enough to to do the trick. For some odd reason. I can only assume that the Forgotten Beast killed itself. I I saw that it had, was uh, smashing around um, plummets of... Uh, or, or it had uh, some plummeting... It looked as if it was uh, throwing people around. And I can only assume that... Uh, where are my dwarves at? So... Guys... Where's the military? Why is nobody coming? These weird occasions where you... Okay, you're reading a book. You're supposed to fight. Unreachable location. Alright, so that's what's happening here. For some odd reason, they assume that this location is unreachable. Okay. Got it. Well, this fortress is suffering a lot of uh, ramifications, as it is currently, but, well, I must say it's also a lot uh, due to the, um, due to all the explanations that I run in between and, uh, you know, there's just so much that I overlook uh, due to that, but that's okay. Losing is fun. Never forget that once you have lost a fortress, you are allowed to build a new one. <laughs> Or, well, you cannot do that as often as you want to, but whatever. So that chaos here was uh, merely because I did not I did station them somewhere where they couldn't reach, and there's a uh, massive loss of civilian life here. We lost around 20 people here. That was brutal. That was uh, by far one of the worst incidents that this fortress had to suffer so far. And there's even more. So, um, yeah, Deep Dwellers can be a real pain, and they can be enough of a pain to uh, justify that you abandon entire layers of the, of the fortress or something like that. Because, you know, you got to be aware of one thing. If they are there once, they will come back again and again and again. They will never stop, uh raiding these places and therefore, you know, use use this knowledge accordingly. So I'm really sad that we lost so many people. I'm pretty sure that the mayor needs a new assignment too, because I saw that the, the former mayor died. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all in all, our magma workshop is now fully set up. There's not 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 that much more to say. The biggest challenge with the magma workshop is to set it up somewhere where you are safe enough to um, get it all done, you know, you saw just what happened there, and to relay the entire infrastructure is also quite a pain. But, you know, 
this fortress has no access to any coal and that alone is really worth the pain in my humble opinion anywho so let's get back downstairs and uh work a little bit around here so we got now plenty of glass blocks to work with you know we got 55 of those so we can just uh, have a look see downstairs here i want to show you a nice little method of uh getting rid of these magma pockets so check there's again people fighting who shouldn't be fighting Ugh. are we done now with these critters yeah looks like we are so the carpenter is only fighting back on his uh, to get back on his feet another thing that's really important to note is that when people are, are dying, um, more people will come back into your fortress, you know. It's not as if there's uh, any, ever any any real big loss of the fortress or, or, or like that. As long as there are people surviving, you can rebuild the fortress always, you know. It's just like that. So, when you put down a water source like that here, for example, the water source is optional. Check if it is optional. <laughs> so, er, here that one. Prefer. Yeah, okay. So, we're putting a pit pond job here over that magma pocket. And uh, now, this one, well, you could also just draw it over the magma thing. So, somebody will now grab himself a bucket. Hopefully, he will and uh, get himself that uh, that water into this uh, magma tile. The beautiful thing about that is this will destroy the magma. So all in all, you can secure yourself tiles that are um, that are one level below this way. It's pretty neat uh, it's a pretty nifty method to uh, get yourself uh, deeper down below. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you're only limited um, by the knowledge of what's going on down there. The only problem is that water hauling can only happen if you have enough buckets available. So, um, yeah, looking at my current uh, wood stockpiles, I could assume that this might be not really um, a thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, just chop more wood. If there's not enough bucket, if you assume that there might be not enough bucket to chop more wood, but um, nobody died of dehydration, so there's a good chance that uh, that this might be okay. So we can, of course, get into the task menu and see if somebody is. Let's see. Got to check it out. Of course, there's so many jobs here. But here, Phil Pond. Nobody has taken that job yet, sadly. You can overwrite that if you have this issue that you want to get this done really badly. You put up the wa a water hauling job, and then you forbid the haulers, and then you put up only water haulers. Let's see, maybe that already works. If that doesn't work, um, you put up some designated wolves for that job. Let's see if somebody has already taken up the task. Not yet. I mean, if it doesn't get done, it's also very, very possible that you're lacking a bucket. But in short, you can quench these uh, pits by just dumping water on them. And this is a, a really, really big thing to know and to work with. Because, you know, this way you can just safely utilize these fields. Because there is one thing to note. If there is, um, if there is magma in it, there is no monster in it, and that's really, really important at that point of the game. You really want to get downstairs as fast as possible without uh, risking any unnecessary dwarven lives. That's always the big problem with that. So let's see, did somebody take up the job now? Phil Pond? Yes, 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 yes. Brilliant. So uh, somebody is doing the job. I want to follow that certain person. So here we go. Let's follow the journey of the farmer downstairs there. I always love to do this from time to time to make sure that they get their stuff done. 
and you know as you saw there i i just limited the the hauling jobs to to water exclusively and that's pretty long way down there you got to admit so uh here we go and what has happened now it's just uh no magma there one bucket of water later and that's the power of this thing so we're going to delete that zone now because we don't need it anymore and now we can continue like that with all the magma um squares that we find the most beautiful part about that is now we can even build a staircase downstairs i don't want you guys to select these things autonomously uh, i'm i'm distrustful you know I don't watch them a moment and the next thing they do is build a, a staircase out of green glass, which I don't really want them to do. So next things you see, we got now a, a beautiful overview about the situation here. So we can decide much, much better what we want to do with these uh, things there. And let's see. We can now also see that these two uh, chambers are connected. So let's have some fun and let's see what happens if we connect magma with water. That's always a fun thing to do. And with these things, it's really, really important that when you want to cut through any of these walls, try to avoid any wall that has gemstones in it. Every wall that has gemstones in it that you will carve through will well, if it interacts with magma, the gemstones will start burning. And the worst part about ge burning gemstones is they really burn for a long time. And before you know what's happening to you, you are up in smoke and your entire um, underground uh, area here is uh, more like a barbecue chamber. And that's where things get really, really nasty. And um, good thing about that is you can quench that fire just with water. Also, a piece of good news is our glass production will now go crazy now that we have these uh, magma glass furnaces implemented. Of course, the sand collection will take a while until it's done, but, uh, you know, we're gonna get there due to that. I'm really, really happy with these things. Um, why is the construction inactive here? Somebody here to tell me? I don't know what went wrong there, but uh, something went wrong. Well, might be the attack of the monster in between. I don't know. We're going to use the chert now because I grew tired of waiting for other things. Okay. So. Not quite sure what's going wrong with those forges, but I'm going to find out in between the episodes. So, Let's see here. That's one thing that I wanted to uh, show you still. So we're kind of going to do this here. And the more little tricks you use, the better. Basically, I really always try to find as many um, areas where I can punch little holes like that or or open up as much territory as, uh, as possible in, in one go. Adamantine mining is really its own mini game on a uh, mini game on its own, and uh, well, all in all, my plan is to go a little bit deeper until I have found an area that's um, well, a little bit more exciting, aka containing some adamantine, because you know this game here this can go on for a while, so I just want to wait until this is channeled out and then. We're going to roll with the outro. So part of me thinks that the distance here is uh, somehow not okay. But, uh, well, I'll, I'll find that out. I'll, I'll experiment around in the episodes between. So, here we have a lot of magma in that bucket here still. Look at that. Here's a lot of uh, red-hot sizzling, sizzling stuff there. So we have to work with that too. And I forgot yet another artifact. I'm, I'm so sorry. This, this, this series, I'm such a butcher when it comes down to artifact creation. But, you know, with all the explanations that I'm doing here, I, I, totally, um, I totally am not able to, to do this better. <laughs> so, well, so we now see the majority of this floor. And... Here goes the miner. 
and just like that you see the water has transformed into obsidian and now we have we have here still some uh, magma now you can use the same technique that i used before you can just put a uh, pond over there and your people will come with buckets and quench that important to note here is that if you have a situation like that with several tiles of magma one bucket won't do it you will need more than one bucket but eventually you'll get rid of that too and then we can already um, claim this tile here and then we can carve a little bit of a uh, fortification here this tile to look what's inside here if it's a demon it won't be able to do much to us because it's just behind a fortification if it's a fireball can't hurt us because it's coming diagonally it's through an obsidian wall so it won't uh, set gemstones on fire you get the idea so there is not that much more to explain about that until we hit the adamantine layer but since this can take quite some time i'm going to do this off camera and uh, continue the next episode with that and we are with that already pretty much at the end of the series sadly so if there are topics that i left out that you want to see covered in the series please let me know so i can set up something to um to fulfill that uh, that request okay my friends thanks so much for watching it's been my pleasure i i really really like this uh, a lot especially the point where we are at now is a lot of fun and drop me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed and if you want to support i'd be deeply appreciating and as usual a subscription is a wonderful way to support this channel and consider subscribe uh, consider checking out the playlist that's what i meant to say if you want to have more dwarf fortress content there's lots of it down there in the description box so see you guys next time with the adamantine and until then have a good one enjoy gaming and see you soon.